First of all, I'm going to explain what we do. We are a supercomputing center, so in a supercomputing center we do several things that are applied things and things that are more basic. And what I'm going to explain is what we do in our center um, in biomedical research. The center is divided in, in several research departments, these four research departments. Uh, so there is one very large computer science department in the, in the center. And then two other application departments, like earth science and life science. And then the applications department, the computer applications in science and engineering case, that is my department. So I'm going to talk about biomechanics, but I'm not, I do not belong to the life science department. The fact is that what we do in our, in, in my own department, are applications. Applications mean that we work in very close collaboration with researchers in different fields of engineering, physics. What we do is computational physics. But one of the, um, one of the main fields that we work um, in is biomechanics. This is one of the collaboration um, lines that we have established. You have to take into account that BSC is the only supercomputing center with more than 60 researchers devoted to HPC-based biomechanical research. In both of the departments, the life science department, that all the researchers, of course, are devoted to this. And in, in my department, the applications department, we are more or less 15 to 20 devoted to that. Not all full-time, but most of them, yes. Um, so the goal is that we develop applications to be used in computational biomechanics. So, well, this, um, this uh, in, in BSC, what we do in the different departments, this is a plot that's coming from the VPH, uh, Virtual Physiological Human, that is a European organization um, that, has, as, as you can guess for in, from its name, it's um, um, trying to work in doing computational people, let's say, in a way, Virtual Physiological Human. So uh, in, in, a, in, in BSC, the life science department is mostly devoted to the lower level, to the molecular level, and maybe a bit over the cell, cell signal and metabolism. And my department is mostly devoted to organ level. So it is organ level, tissue level, and going a bit lower to cell level. Evidently, each of these levels need communication with the other levels, of course, but um, what I, what I mean is that we are not simulating uh, the lower part and the upper part. From the lower part and, we, and the upper part, we get some contributions for the, from the environment, let's say, and from the organ level, but we are not simulating that. So as you can see, in my center, there is a small gap, well, can be a very large one, but there, there is a gap between these two, um, these two colors. Uh, but well, this is why, this is why you can think that in our center what we do is sort of integration of all the uh, biomechanical research at the simulation level. One of the, why we do this? Well, one of the, I will talk mostly now about what we do in my department. Um, this is taken from, a, from, a, from this paper from two, 2011. Uh, look, to finish a new drug, it takes more or less 12 to 15 years to be obtain, obtained, and depending on the drug, can cost a uh, billion euros. Um, the idea of a target for doing a drug, for making a drug, can come from academia, clinical research, or commercial sector. It may take several years to get a, a volume of data that can, where you can decide, okay, let's go ahead with that. So in fact, it is more. You can, you can go back more years. Um, and then once you decide that this target can be the one that we are looking for, then you have to find the suitable molecules with all the properties that you need. So the goal that, well, if you think about all these years, 15 years, 1 billion euros, imagine that the, that the drug is not working and you discover that the drug is not working at the last level. Then what we do is to, our goal is to provide computational tool in order to try to speed up all the process and to reduce costs and to try to improve the success rate. What is very interesting is that in other industries like oil and gas, um, aerospace, automotive, this has happened with simulations. This is something that it is, it, it can be clearly seen. And what we would like to do is more or less the same thing, but now in, in for instance, in pharma industry. But also, well, why could drug can fail 
Well, so th this is to understand what we can provide to, to these people because they, it is not going to work or it is not going to be safe. Um, because everything in the in paper can be well or in the first, uh, the first stages of experiments can be well, but the fact is that these molecular interactions are, is not just the problem. You can, you can face different problems when you, when you jump from a species to another species or when you start to consider all the interactions in, the, in a system. Um, so that's why you have to study all these kind of things. You have to study the interaction between the components, the, the dynamical responses. This is a, a, a transient process. Um, and also, of course, at last, coupling with the larger system, you are you are going to you are going to move from in vitro to um, in vivo. So, well, it's a much larger system. But also, uh, these kind of simulations can be used just for plainly understanding the biological systems, uh, because they are extremely complex. Uh, the variability is very large, not just from one one species to the other, but also between the individuals of the same species. Um, there is plenty of uncertainty in the physiological models. It is not like simulating the airflow around an aircraft. It's much more, much more complex, and the uncertainty, uncertainty is much, much larger. Experimental data is really very scarce. It's difficult to obtain. You have plenty of um, ethical issues to get this data also. And the experiments are really very costly. There is a lot of money that you have to spend to do these kind of experiments. So what we what we do is something that can be used just to test things, to improve the modeling, and to try to predict the behavior. So the keywords of what we do is um, we have to study, we can study with our simulations the drug action, the drug delivery. Um, if, you if you need the drug somewhere specifically in your body, I will show this then. Um, the treatment uh, planning, uh, medical training, uh, also for instance for um, um, surgery um, also can be used in design from different devices like pro prosthesis, stents, valves, whatever. Um, study different surgical procedures and treatments. Uh, these are the, the, the keywords that come to my mind, but could be much more than them. Than, than them. So we are targeting three different players: the biomedical research, the pharma industry, and also the medical devices uh, manufacturers. So what is the research program in my, in my department? Um, well, it's a, problems are multi-scale and multi-physics, very large. So HPC is a must. All right, there are plenty of problems where HPC is not important. It's not that important that are of smaller scales. Well, in our case, we are focusing on, on problems that with such a complexity that you really need uh, HPC. Um, you really need a lot of HPC, so it's a uh, parallelization is going to be done on to 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 run efficiently in in supercomputers, using thousands of cores right now, but maybe tens of thousands in the future, and used to be hundreds of cores um, to simulate complex biomedical problems. In all these projects, we need a deep commitment of medical doctors, but because must be something that can be helpful for them, something that they can use. And of course, we need a very strong collaboration with doctors, physiologists, clinical image researchers. So one of the goals that we are looking for is try to create a sort of computational man that is the best possible dummy for biomedical research. In the sense that, you know what is a dummy? This, this that goes in a car, and they, this sort of kind of humans that goes in a car and make, well, when a, when a car crash, um, these dummies are completely instrumented, and they are very, very expensive, even much more expensive than the car. So, what and very with very sophisticated uh, probes. So, in this case, is more or less the same idea. It's trying to create something that can be that is more and more sophisticated and, and closer to the um, to the biological system. In all these projects that we are running, these are the key players of the project. On one side, you have these medical doctors with a completely um, a, a, a comprehensive idea on what to do to heal people. On the other side are us, the green ones, the computational scientists. We do not, of course, we do not speak the same language, so the communication is very difficult. And in the middle of us, you have these bioengineers that must know both languages. And so in all the projects, we have these three key players. Um, 
that these bioengineers can be people uh, kind of uh, bioinformatics or physiologists or even people working in, in data acquisition. So I will just, just not to be so, so boring, I will go straight to two projects that we are doing. This is the list of the projects that we are running right now in biomechanics. Um, the name is Alia Red because we have um, the code that we use for solving all these kind of physical problems is called Alia. Alia is a um, multi-physics um, computational mechanics code for running simulations on fluid mechanics, solid mechanics, electromagnetism, and bodies. And, and that can solve coupled um, in a very efficient way problems in very large supercomputers. This is the typical plot that we have to, this is the plot that we live on, is the, the, the plot that we, the kind of plots that we always have to show that this is the scalability of the code. Uh, scalability means how much faster you can go if you use more cores, more processors. Um, well, of course, you, most of you know that, but uh, anyway, so this is the, the kind of problem that we are solving here. It's, it's a biomechanic, um, biomechanical problem. This is an aneurysm and it's flow, it's blood flow inside the aneurysm. So we started with a rather coarse mesh and then we refine and refine and refine the mesh in order to get a larger one and run in up to 16,000 cores. This was run in a blue gene machine in, in Ulich. So this is for you that are more technical in this specific stuff. This is incompressible flow. So it's an Im implicit formulation. Um, well, anything, any other, any question that you have about this, I can, I can explain. So we have named all the biomechanical projects where we use Alia, our code, we have named this grouping of projects Alia Red. Um, so I will show the first two examples, the cardiac computational model and the respiratory system. In the cardiac computational model, what we are looking for is, we, what we would like to do is to simulate the, mask, the pumping action of the heart. The heart is a machine, it's a pump. Okay, it's a, a very sophisticated one, but it is no more than a pump, than a pump to us, to, to physicists. So it's a multi-physics problem, it's multi-scale. Geometries are very complex, are not some simplified geometries, are coming from, from uh, images. Um, it's a very expensive computational modeling. Of course, it's HPC based. And the goal is that we, what we would like to do is to make something as comprehensive as possible. So the goal is to create a computational scenario to, to test things. Um, well, in this case, for instance, we have these blue ones are medical doctors, and the other ones are people like us and also bioengineers. So it is a sort of, it's very, there are plenty of people working in this, in this project from different places from Spain, but also for UK, from UK, from USA, from Brazil, and they are involved attacking different parts of the, of the problem. And in the, in the middle of it, there is our simulation software. What we would like to do is to, well, consider that at organ level, the heart, it's, uh, you have an electrical propagation, you have um, mechanical deformation, and you have blood flow. Uh, and then in green is the coupling between the different problems. And then you have another problem, additional problem, that is data simulation on how um, are you going to set all the parameters that you need to create a model. So I will focus right now in these three problems. The electrical propagation, the mechanical deformation, and the blood flow. And in particular, in the example that I'm going to show right now, there is not going to be any blood flow. It's just you are going to see the heart beating, but this heart beating is going to be the electrical propagation and the mechanical deformation. This is the kind of example that, well, the kind of simulations that we do. This is a two these are the two ventricles. These two ventricles are coming from a rabbit, and it is, well, coming from images. They have also the information about the fiber field, the, the fibers, the muscular fibers in the, in the heart. So the color means the electrical propagation that it is propagating and then it is driving the contraction of the heart for the heart to pump. Um, so also I left, I left here the mesh and also you can see with kind of a thicker line um, the, the subdivision in the, in, the, in the computer. This has this run in, in Mare Nostrum. Um, what else can I say? Well, here there is no blood inside. So it is, we have put, um, there is a, a pressure inside that it is fictitious, but in any case, it serves for 
for the sort of problem that we are we would like to study. The reason for not well, a very good reason for not trying to put the blood in, uh, inside is that this kind of geometry is coming from from images, so it is sort of cat geometry. It, it's it's cat. It is only that there is no place for the valves or whatever. There are only the ventricles. But well, we have the another geometries with uh, where we can put the blood, so we are working on that right now. This is just a scalability for the electromechanical problem done in Marinostrum 3. In Marinostrum 3. So this is the, well, up to 8,000 processor. For, for you to give you an idea is that um, more or less the rule of thumb that we use is that depending on the, more or less, more or less, if we are using um, um, up to around 4,000 cells per core, so it is a typical problem, with can be very large as a 20, 28 billion tetrahedra, it's more or less we are, what we are doing is running one second of real time simulation one second in a few minutes uh, so it's it's not real time really but it is let's say human time so you can run plenty of simulations to try to understand what's going on another example is this the respiratory system for the respiratory system this is the, the, the typical geometry that we got in this case this this project is done with um, Imperial College and London and Jackson State University in USA. So this is transitional flow. And we have been, well, we have some hours, not only in, in Mare Nostrum, but also through Brace in different, in Eugene and, and GUI, different supercomputers. So the goal here is to study how um, air is circulating in the respiratory system at different reg regimes. So this is the typical case that we would like to do this computational dummy, in the sense that we have one geometry, and with this geometry, we can vary some aspects of the geometry, have many runs of this geometry, but um, that can be done offline, and then the results can be explored in order to get some, some information, and will be more explicit right now. This is the kind of dummy that we are creating. The upper part of the dummy comes from Imperial College London, and the, the lower part of the, the upper part comes from an um, image, and the lower part is synthetic, is created well with a group that we work with in Jackson State University. And then we do something to um, join smoothly these two, these two geometries. Um, so the goal, you see around the face, you have this sort of box. So you use this box to put the boundary conditions in it. Um, this is the just a detail of the mesh. It's a very, it's, this is a, a coarse mesh, and then we refine the mesh. And the problem that I'm going to show you is, is in for 300, around 300 million tetrahedra. This is just a detail of the, of the mesh. And this is just a section. Here you can see this is the, it's very complex. The, the internal part of the nose and the respiratory system is really very, very complex. This is a cut. This is the nose. And this is the entrance. This is how the, the air is, is uh, getting in. This example of this simulation, and this is only a cut of this part behind the nose. This simulation is done in what they call, this is a fast sniff. Because they want to, these people want to, run, to have these simulations at different regimes, kind of normal breathing, and then sort of a, of a sharp breath, and with I, I will tell you then why I the, wh why they they want this kind of all these different regimes. So what we do is this: what we have implemented also is this massive particle tracking. So the scenario is that you run these simulations at an, at runtime. You include in the in the simulation Lagrangian particles, as if they are particles coming. These particles are are there to track the, traje the trajectories in the inside the respiratory system. So it's, it can be up to several million of, of Lagrangian particles that are integrated on the fly while you run. It is not post-processes on the fly. When you run, you, you, you integrate the, trajectory, the trajectories. And this gives you a very good, um, very good accuracy. Um, so the goal is to you to run different, to have different runs of different gender, age, physical condition. For instance, people that can have um, some obstructive um, illness. 
Um, so you, you have several runs that are run offline with all these particles, and then you analyze this. In order to analyze this, we create a database to analyze the results, and th so the goal is how could we identify and track these particles? Well, this is just a picture of a part of the of a part of the of the problem. So it is it is taken with a, with a certain perspective. So this is kind of the entry, the nose, and all the particles are getting in, and well, they are tracked all along the the respiratory system. So the goal for that is that imagine that you would like to see how a drug is delivered inside your respiratory system. So with that, you can identify some particles. For instance, this here. Here you can see all these blue particles are at a, at a certain initial time step. Then go back and dip and, and, and stay there. So uh, with that, you can you can identify, you can design an inhaler or improve the design and the design of an inhaler. You can also track the sizes of the particle. You can identify by sizes the particle and, and, and see where they go, at what time are delivered to a given region. This could be interesting for asthma, for EPOC, or for any cancer or any kind of illness that you have in the respiratory system. Um, well, this is another example of that. So the goal is that, so what we have done is, um, we have tested this in Mare Nostrum, but Mare Nostrum is not the best machine for doing these kind of things, because what we would like to have is something that, well, there is, you run the, all the cases, and through a Paraview interface, a client that it is on your machine, you can explore this database that it is distributed using Hadoop, in a, all the particles and all the runs um, in a, in, um, in one parallel computer. So, well, we have developed all these in order to identify the, to identify the particles. This is the typical example. You, you get kind of a box and you say, well, I would like to see uh, at a given time, all the particles at a given time at this box, where are they coming from the beginning? So tracking back the particles. Or you can do the, the other way around. You can say, for instance, all the particles around here at the beginning, where are they going at this moment? Are they achieving the part of the respiratory system that we would like them to achieve? Um, also, you can classify the particles by species, by by size, and also track the, the the particles. So, well, these are sort of the conclusions and future lines. Um, what we are doing is try to just to improve the dummies. Improve the dummies means means to improve the models that we have to make the code more efficient to do this kind of um, also interfaces. Um, something that we must do is to, you would like to run these simulations for people with, with some specific condition. So we have to, what we have to do is, for instance, to remap the, um, remap the meshes without just by deforming them, but not that much, preserving, for instance, boundary layers. You have to do this kind of, um, of, uh, algorithm, of um, computational tool to do this, this deformation. And also what is very important is the last part, they integrate this post-process in a doctor-friendly environment for the doctors to use. I mean, doctors are not going to simulate anything in the future. They are not going to use a computer and simulate in the same way that doctors right now are not using an MRI or not using a scanner or not using an X-ray. Doctors are asking you to go somewhere to get an MRI and then come back with the results. So what we would like to do is to, we are going to, or we, um, another company or another agent is going to run the simulations, but then provide the results to the doctor in this kind of, of way that I have described. Um, we are carrying some, we have some collaborations to, with, with different companies and other groups that, are, that were not listed here um, for, using, for using these kind of tools in their, in their environment, in, in the design, but uh, we would like to also to use in, in production. Um, and what else? I think that yeah, nothing else. So thank you very thank you very much for your attention. Yes. Yes. Um, this is the it. It's something that it is related. 
it's something related to the to the influence that you get from the Okay, so the goal is that what we are, what we, yes, that's it, that's it. The goal is that what we are doing is try to simulate, for instance, the heart as an at organ level, but you need contributions from the circulatory system. And these people in Brazil are, are creating this wonderful um, arterial network. So it's a 1D model, but with all this information from the arteries, that's it. They are in a, the, it's a, in LNCC, Laboratorio Nacional de Calculo Científico. They are in Petropolis, near Rio. Yes, near Rio. So they, it's, this is a very interesting interaction that can be set because the, um, this model, as an input, they want to have um, um, flow rate. And then they give you back the resistance, the impedance of the system. So it's sort of, you can do sort of um, iteration, iterative process in order to get the, 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 the right problem. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yes. No, 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 it could be because because in fact um what we need for what we need for for all these kind of things um is um our input is a CAD file, but our output can be a CAD file too yes, yes, so you can imagine typically this this all this thought this sort of automatic design stuff based on simulations um is something that it is um in the infancy and particularly here. But the ultimate goal is going to be can be this that you can say, all right, I will, I need, a, I don't know, a prosthesis for this person. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Yes. The the. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. The optimization algorithms are there. The simulation is there. And the 3D is there. The 3D printer is there. The only thing, well, the thing that is lacking is the um, efficient way of translating, let's say, your body to a simulation scenario. But this is something that is going to, and to improve the physiological models, considering these two things. But for that, this HPC-based biomedical simulations is going to help a lot because you can run plenty of simulations with very very comprehensive simulations in a in a small time um, so with that you can really improve your improve the way you are creating the models so I think that yes this is a very likely uh, future it's something that it sounds a big science fiction right now but it's 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 it no not at all not at all
Y yes, in, in, this, in this case, not histological, but in this case, physical measurements. Because we, what we are doing is you impose um, a given pressure somewhere, and then you try to measure the speed or the flow rate. And we have experimental results for this guy, for this, for this person. And it looks like, well, the results are nice. The problem with all these kind of things is that uh, I mentioned before an aircraft. So it's rather easy to compute. You can put a strain gauge wherever you like in the wing of an aircraft and measure the, the strain, measure the deformation. But you can't do that inside the nose of a person. So most of the experimental evidence is sort of indirect. And for instance, in the case of this patient, we would like of course, to measure the pressure wherever we like, but you can't. So you can um, see some, you know, indirect evidence that what you are doing is okay. 